you're gonna have some farts, man. So there's a problem right there. Do you, do you feel me on this? Starting to get the idea? Old man, passing gas. Right, right, there's reasons for this. Digestion, the ability to break down the food and then absorb it. First, it has to be broken down. Then, see this chicken thigh right here? It has to be broken down first. Hi, this is John, and welcome back to Mr. America Heart. I'm cooking once again, and you'll notice that I've been addressing a lot of the concerns for the lifters that are over 50 years old. Uh, I'm one of them, and in recent videos, you guys have made some really nice requests, so I'm going to honor one of them right now. And I'm also going to honor the fact that we have more ladies than ever before watching these videos on my channel. So I'm not just addressing this to men over 50, I'm also bringing it to just anyone over 50, past 40 really, but we'll call it over 50 for fun, just for this video and these, this little series that I'm doing here. So look, today we're talking about how you've seen me in this setting, repeatedly cooking all the protein for our family. So I have on my griddle right now some chicken thighs. These are just boneless chicken thighs that I'm cooking. I'm about to throw on, I have frozen sirloin Angus beef patties. I either do that or grass-fed beef. For the kids, specifically, I do use sausage for the kids, sausage links, and also some sausage polska kielbasa, which is some sausage pork mixed with turkey and beef. So I make all these proteins and I cook them in mass. In my house we do eat them and everybody has their favorites. So of course I cook a little bit for each one of us and our favorites. But what is the concern on your end with protein? Being past 50, the concern is our absorption of protein. Do you need more protein than you did when you were 20 or 25? Now some of you are going to say, well, we have better protein synthesis when we're in our 20s, 25, 30, 35, 40, and therefore you need more protein to handle the protein synthesis. On the one hand, I would say that sounds very good, that sounds true. However, the thing that you're battling as you get past a certain age is that decade by decade, and this one's not something that you're going to be able to measure. It's not something that you're going to be able to sit here and say, well, I'm going to get a test for this. Uh, scientifically, they've already proven it, that your ability to generate the enzymes to break down the proteins in your meals, the ability to break down the proteins is lower and to give you a rough guesstimate, as an example, and I'm not citing a certain study, but it's been repeatedly proven over and over again that the range, when you have a 20-year-old man, for example, all the way to age 70, at age 70, he only has approximately 15% of the output of those same digestive enzymes to break down protein. So do you see a problem here? The problem is, is old man, una older man, I should say, unable to break down protein like he did when he was 20 years old. Therefore, that means your absorption is going to be lower. Therefore, that means that when you are pushing the food through your intestine, you're going to have more undigested food making it through your stomach into the small and large intestine and therefore putrefying, rotting, we're going to have gas. You're going to have some farts, man. So there's a problem right there. Do you, do you feel me on this? You starting to get the idea? Old man, passing gas. Right, right. There's reasons for this. Digestion, the ability to break down the food and then absorb it. First, it has to be broken down. Then, see this chicken thigh right here? It has to be broken down first in my gut before I can absorb it. If it's broken down first, I'll be okay. It's easier to absorb when it's already broken down into its smallest fragments. So that's what the enzymes do. Your ability to produce those enzymes, though, is a little bit on the downswing decade to decade. So what do we do? Well, you want to grab a hold of some protein digestive enzymes. I use uh, you know, hydrochloric acid, HCL, and pepsin. You can find you know, various companies out there. I'll put a link down in the bottom for the exact one that I use without naming the company. 
because they don't sponsor me, but I'll go ahead and put it up there anyway for you guys' sake. And I take those enzymes every time I eat protein. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about a snack or we're talking about a meal. Every time I remember to take them, a bigger protein meal, I'm going to go ahead and take a couple extra enzymes. Smaller protein meal, I'll pop one. So it assists my system in breaking down the protein. So should you have a concern about protein? Yes, you should. Should you have a concern about you getting enough as you get older? Yes, you should. That's male, female, it does not matter. The ability to break it down is what matters. And then the ability to absorb it. You can't absorb something that's not broken down. You can't absorb these chicken thighs the way they are. You have to break them down first. First it starts with chewing and then from that point on it's all a chemical reaction. You need the enzymes in your gut from your, well, the mouth breaks down the protein, but you have amylase in your mouth, which breaks down carbs. But specifically, the proteins don't really start until they're making it down into your gut, into your stomach. So, you feel me on this. Hydrochloric acid, you got to have it. Forget those stomach acid neutralizers. They're turning your stomach acid to water. That's a whole other problem right there. It's a whole other problem. If you do have... Uh, uh, you know, problems with the stomach. If you have ulcers, of course, that's what those neutralizers were designed for. Neutralize your stomach acid, let the ulcer heal up, and then move on from there. But in the meanwhile, you should be concentrating on the ability to break down the protein. So that's it for today. Focus on your ability to break down the protein. You see, I get all excited about this because I'm going, understand the process. Breaking it down first, then absorption. And protein synthesis, you stimulate your muscles from your weight training. We have such a focus on the back end of it, stimulate the muscles. But it's useless if you can't break it down, then absorb it. You need all three. Break it down, absorb it, and stimulate the muscles to send the signal to them that they need the protein for repair and growth. And that's it today. Something to think about. From my heart to you, John Hart, and thank you for stopping by. If you're liking these videos, please, on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, you'll see that bright red subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. It's free to do, and you'll get notices, alerts, notification when my new videos pop up. Off to your left, if you'll hit a thumbs up over there, that's really appreciated as well. It helps the channel out, and feel free as always. Hit me with your comments down below. Thank you. Hey, do you want John to be your personal trainer? Get your training and diet managed online by Mr. America himself. Go to MrAmericaHeart.com. It's in the link right here below in the video's description.